Howdy, beautiful Bart here, and welcome. We are live, for the most part. Alright, so for those who are wanting to follow on with this, I am in my Beefalo Bart Gaming Discord channel, which link can be found in my channel descriptions. Um, I am in the Paragon Tutorial Series room, so if you have questions, feel free to hop in there and um, ask questions in there. I may not be able to see the chat in YouTube, so I'm primarily focused in on the Discord chat for now. Um, quick run through of where we are so far. And yes, it doesn't look like much, and there isn't much. Um, we go into play mode, and we have our lovely Shinbi with her sword. We have a temporary health bar, we have a temporary mechanism to cause us some slight pain and discomfort. We have a temporary healing system to heal us back to normal. And we have a target dummy of which we can attack. No effects on it just yet. And he dies. And for the giggles of it, I know from Part of what I've been seeing is there was a launching system that was in the original Paragon game. So we've got the ability to do that and adjust the height and everything on it as we need to. So what I'm wanting to do is uh, if you're interested in this project and you want to contribute to it or you want to make suggestions or whatever else, you have to let me know and so the best way to contact me is going to be in the Discord channel. I will be able to respond to that anytime that I'm in front of my computer, which is quite a bit. I am going to be looking at that Discord. It, it stays up on my right monitor and, and I, I can glance at it at any time. Even if it shows that I'm offline, sometimes I'm actually there, so just post a question. If I'm there, I'll, I'll pop in and answer back. So. Moving along with what we have, um, we've got Shinbi, we've got her animated, we have Decker in and not completely animated, um, partially, and I, I really would have to spend a lot of time, each of the characters has their own animation set, and they really and truly need their own animation blueprints and their own montages. Um, I'm more of a core aspect person myself, but, you know, I can do the animation montages if I have to. I can muddle through them. I can do the um, animation blueprints, the blend spaces, things like that. I can I can do them. It just takes me a little bit of time to do them. Uh, we've got our, our walk forward, walk left, walk back, walk right those basics there. Um, essentially I'm going to go off of what was done to get Shinbi rolling. Shinbi actually came with her own animation blueprint and own blend spaces and everything else. This has no animation blueprint, no blend spaces, uh, no player character, none of that is here. It, well, it does have blend spaces, excuse me. Um, but they are for the leaning portions of it, and that'll be something to be added later. The aim offsets are are here, and the blend space is there for it. That'll have to be activated as well later, but looking directly at the animations, as long as we have the basic turns, and honestly, as long as we have a walk and a run, then that's the biggest thing that's going to be what we need to, to work with. And I can create a basic on that and then start adding in a basic attacks and so forth. Because just giving her a sword attack is not going to work because she uses a staff. And for those of you that are watching, like I said, if you've got any questions or you want to make any comments, you can post them. I'll try to keep an eye on, on both the YouTube and the Discord chats. But do prefer to use Discord if possible. Um, the 
Discord is faster for me to look at. It's it's on my right. It's easier for me to see. The left monitor, I've got at least four different windows open, including OBS. I've got my um, YouTube open so I can see what the stream looks like. I've got uh, File Explorer. I've got uh, GIMP open. i got a lot of stuff open over on that left monitor. The only thing that's open on the right monitor is just the... Uh, the Discord and center monitor is primarily well. Everything is on the center monitor. You can see. I'm having three 32-inch monitors, and I'm starving for space. So again, we got our basics. Um, I'll look to see if there's a run animation or a sprint. Sprint forward, start and stop. Yeah, just sprint forward. So I can build a basic animation for Decker right now. And what I'll do is I'll come in here and not there in that, that section. I'm going to come into the characters folder. And in the player folder, I've already created the animation systems for quote-unquote Paragon Animation Blueprint. But that's going to have to be changed over to shouldn't be because that's hers and we'll do a rename on that real quick change paragon to am I spelling that correctly this particular version of what we're doing here um, I'm kind of wanting anybody who wants to contribute ideas to it to pitch in and give the ideas. Um, as I've said before, I didn't play the game. I have a general knowledge of what the game is like and what some of the gameplay was like. Um, but, you know, if it was purely left up to me, it would just be a, a variation of the look and the feel of the way that the game was before, but a whole different style of combat. Um, in fact, the, the style of... of combat that I'm doing in the other game that's going on is going to be revised as well. This one will actually get the shooting style and the projectile system, which magic is a type of projectile, by the way. Um, so if you want to see like a, a fireball or a, you know, a, a spell that cast out something that you see traveling towards a target, that becomes a projectile. And projectile system that I'm going to use is actually uh, ray tracing and it's a line tray system where if you can imagine a laser being projected towards a target and there will be a focusing system so once you actually tag a target you, you say okay you hit a, a key and it locks onto the target that's under your mouse cursor or the closest target or whatever um, it'll lock in on that target and then your spell will cast towards that Otherwise, you're going to have to use a crosshair system, and where your crosshair is on the screen is where you're going to have to try to cast your spell and hope they're still there. Um, there's some stuff that we can add in to create a homing effect, but yeah, that'll help as well. If your target is moving, it'll actually track towards your target and actually go to them. So the, the style of combat is going to be a whole lot different than what I'm doing in the other project because I'm going to change that other project over to the same type system. But, like for swords and melee attacks, as you can see, um, for right now it says, ouch, damn it, that hurt. That means I actually connected and hit. So, right now the damage is at 25, and he only has 100 health. So, four hits is enough to kill him. So, while we're actually doing this, I can actually, before I start doing the animation systems, is actually come into the files for Shinbi and look at her effects she has particle effects that I could probably use to enhance whatever is being done he has some for the wolf the emotes and the abilities but the the actual style of gameplay again I'm gonna let some of this come from the people who are watching these videos and who want to see this I'm not the kind of person that really gets into doing a full remake of something. I'm not saying that the game was bad in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying that why not put my own spin on it and make it similar but a little bit different. 
you know, I'm not totally saying that I'm going to have Shimmy dressed up as some pimp hoe and going through and, you know, you know, that kind of stuff, but, um, third person, yeah, probably so, because of this style, I think that, um, third person kind of fits, besides, who doesn't want to look at that, you know, she's pretty good to look at, now, the, the camera y'all thing, this is something that, um, that I, I usually leave in place for a lot of my stuff, because I like being able to move around and actually see my character, but that can actually be put on a keybind, and then when you actually turn your mouse, you're actually going to turn your character as well. So, right now she turns her head, and that's it. But I can have it set to where, you know, she actually turns her whole body whenever you, you look left and right. So, that, again, is a little small thing that, um, you know, you guys have to, to suggest as well. So let's let's give her a, an effect for whenever she's actually swinging her primary weapon or, or a sword or whatever. Primary effects. And since I didn't play the game, you guys are gonna have to like correct me on, on pronunciations and stuff. Um, yeah, um, I can understand that. I, and I I love feedback, and since I don't know anything about the game, if you guys want to see something, if there was something you didn't like about the original game, well, hell, why why let that, that suck factor stay? Instead, okay, polish it and make it better than it was before. You know, there's no reason not to. So, you can improve on things a little bit here and there. I'll wait for compilers here. So there is a particle effect for whenever she actually hits. Um, so we can actually, once these compilers finish, um, which won't take but another minute or so, if we want, we can actually apply this effect, the particle effect. So whenever she hits something with her sword, it'll do that effect. You'll see a little bit of sparks come off. It's little things like that, little nuances that I'm trying to, to come up with. Oh, absolutely, it's gonna be multiplayer. I don't make single player games. It's got to be multiplayer, you know. I'm like this with the way that I see it is... Sure, I'm going to leave that selected. Um, I like Team Deathmatch style, where it's team versus team, or if you want to play with yourself, I mean, by yourself, uh, you can play with, um, um, you know, you versus another opponent, you know, an AI component, uh, opponent, or even... Uh, fill your own team with with AI as well, so it's still team versus team, and even though if you're you're playing by yourself, so I just want the options there. So let's look at our cute little shinbi. There's not much in here, you know. Yeah, that's a, this stuff right here. Um, I still need to clean it up a little bit. I may have to like throw in a delay or you know some other other things in there. And what that was is um was testing around with the emotes. So as she's standing there, you can. And I I don't have the right sound files put on with it yet, but it's supposed to randomize and pick between the the four different ones that I, I picked out. And it keeps playing the same damn sound file, even though I told it to use a different one. That's right. Bring it. <laughs> so, by hitting the F key right now, it cycles between the four different amounts. <laughs> so, yeah, they're not synced and, and that kind of stuff too. <laughs> and they can be improved on. But like I said, this was just something I was playing around with, just to throw in some of those taunts and emotes and whatnot. And you see there's a lot of crap involved in just doing that. But since I don't like a lot of mess in my blueprints, I'm going to take and drag this out a little bit. And I am going to do actually this right here. Select all that stuff. And I am going to... 
No, I don't do any C++. I've got other people that can handle C++. I'm going to be sticking to the visual scripting system just because that's what I know best, and that's easier for people, for most people to follow. They can kind of get a hand of it. And um, let's see, we're going to call this emotes. So for the average, you know, the average people that um, want to watch this, then they can follow along a lot easier. And some of this can actually be carried over into if you're doing C++, because of the fact that um, the coding itself and the blueprints themselves, they're all pretty much the same thing. It's just you don't actually have to type anything for the most part. You can just drag and drop a lot of stuff in, but you still have to know what to drag and drop. Yeah, you know, a lot of your multiplayer stuff can be done with blueprints, and my other uh, projects that I've got going on, they work just fine. And I told you to be named emotes. So that's that's cleaned up, and we have on our event begin play plays our little cheesy player HUD. We want to find our what's our health regen, our attack stuff. There we go. Combo system, left mouse button, save attack, our primary montages, primary melee. What I need to find is the where I've got the damage system set up, and it's probably going to be. the dummy, the target dummy. Yeah, because I haven't set it up yet to um, to put the weapons in to where I can edit them in the details panel from the, the main base. Once that's done, it'll be easy to, to edit the, the character by coming in here and saying, okay, well, here's our, our this, and I can change that and whatnot. So, let's actually take a look at the Blueprint for the target dummy. NPC base. Alright, so yeah, this is where our sword collision comes in. And we have that slight delay so that it doesn't overlap the sword. And where it says, ouch, damn it, that hurt, that's where we can go ahead and start putting in um, a spawn emitter at location. And I'm going to go ahead and take and dump that guy and go ahead and put this in. So instead of actually saying ouch that hurt, then he'll actually you'll see the the impact emitter. So I'll come back in here to where we're looking at the effects primary and I believe it was that one. Connect it there and we need to get our location. Don't already have a reference. So scroll in, we'll grab a reference to our mesh. We will get our location. We want our world location. Get world location and link that directly into here. So now we have our emitter spawning right there where our mesh is. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that'll be good enough for now. Let's just go ahead and, and see what it looks like. Alright, what are we doing here? Something is saving. thought I had everything turned off in the background so I didn't have anything else running. So if we come into our player base Come on, do your warm-up thing. Now, whenever you first start, while she's doing that emote, should I make her stop where you can't move until she's done doing that? All right, it spawns it, but it spawns it at his feet. So let's actually see if we can move that up. So what do you think about making it to where, um, when you do the, uh, the the start game, and she does her little start game animation, lock it to where you're not actually um, able to 
move until she's done. You're talking like three seconds, three, three or four seconds. Let's see, let's break this link temporarily. We need to get our location, but we need to add a plus to our Z value by like 100. So we'll do our world location. So we'll do a vector plus vector, link that in, and we'll do, let's try 100 and see if that works. You know what? One of these guys is just not enough for me. We need to have more in here. Just we have more target dummies to kill. And let's save all. So she would be stuck. You wouldn't be able to move until now. You want to bring that up a little bit more. Because it's still right there at his midsection. I want it to spawn like in his chest area. And we'll add a sound to it as well, but um, let's actually raise that up to 150, and then let's actually look for a sound, see what works with that. And her sound files were shoved into the hero folder, I believe. You would think it would be in the effects, you know, sound, sound effects, that kind of stuff, but new. It was stuck in hero, shouldn't be sounds. And sound wave wise, there's a lot of different sound files that, that she came with as well. And all these characters come with a buttload of, of sounds. But you know, I'm I still haven't downloaded all of them. The the map asset folder was like seventeen and a half gigabytes. It's a big file. And when you start looking at each one of these characters is around two gigabytes apiece for all the stuff that comes with each character. So that's gonna make one huge file size. So I'm not gonna have anything to upload for a quick demo because of the fact that everything is just gonna be so large. So anything and everything that's being done demo wise is gonna be done right here on my machine. We have kind of junk internet, it's AT and T. All right, well, thanks for coming in, Unknown, and look forward to seeing you next time. So, what do we have for her to... Wong means well. He's just trying to be a good brother. Mm -hmm. But if he thinks he can tell me what to do, he's got another thing coming. That's right. he got another thing coming. Um... All right, guys, you guys are, are Paragon fans. you got to tell me what, what she says whenever she she hit something or if she had an effect whenever she hit something with her sword I'm pretty sure she did time to upgrade that's how we do it back home yes okay um, the beginning of a new adventure see you can add that sound file into the, the very start when you first go in there the beginning of a new adventure so you can say that whenever you first go into the map <laughs> Hi there. Next, you do a um, uh, randomizer, so All it can. All right, Agora. Let's, let's get, get this started. started. It's It'll cycle great randomly between them. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> mm hmm. So yeah, um, we got health low. This doesn't feel good. Can't stop me. <laughs> well, here's a swing effect. <laughs> So if there's that effect, let's look at the sound cues. A sound cue is usually, if, for those that don't know, is a, a grouping of multiples that are already set up to run random. So if there was one there was for swing... Um, then she probably already has something that we can use here. All kill, kill ready. ready. Already then. Um, 
No. Effort attack. Um, yeah, see, a lot of this stuff right now is, is still shooting from the hip, because I'm still waiting for more people to jump in and say, hey, you know, this is what we want. So, should be effort swing. That'll work. So, let's actually grab all of this stuff all right here, and let's move it over. And then from here, we want to go ahead and do... Play sound at location, and then we can go ahead and hit that and link our location in using, actually, we can just grab the location directly from there. It'll spawn at his feet, but it's good enough. So now when we go into the map, all right, walk over and... So, it's working. It's not perfect, but it's working. And, you know, that at least gives us the, the effect of this is what happens whenever you get hit. It's a basic hit effect. And... You need to look at his death system as well. And whenever it actually kills the, the NPC, that's the overlap events... Is that all I put in there? Yeah, really? That's all I put in there? Um, yeah, on component begin overlap. That's all I put in there. How about that? So, he does have health, and his health is set to 100. So, we'll come over here and just as a placeholder, I'm going to go ahead and put in. Um, Event begin play. Uh, no, I don't want that. I want the event tick. And again, until I find a better way of having to constantly go through event ticks, I have to keep resorting to them. They work. And when there's not a whole lot of stuff in a map, it's not a problem. But when you have five, six thousand um, actors in a map or more, and lots of polys and lots of this and lots of that going on, it can actually start getting a little bit on the crappy side. We actually want to put in a branch. Want to get a reference to the health. And we're going to ask, is our health... equal to or less than... or less than or equal to zero and if that are be the case then we need to we're already going to kill him that already happens and I probably should be attaching this into the same location where that happens but we're going to go ahead and throw it here for now anyway and we're going to grab a reference to the mesh we're going to get world location and you guessed it, we're going to play sound at location. And just going to link in a sound here. We don't care about the volume just yet. And we just need to find a sound file. Something that will work. And we'll actually use it for her kill sound. which I saw that in here somewhere. There's a lot of files, and I should probably expand it out and move tiles into other pages and this and that and everything else, but, you know, I'm old and I'm stupid. My heart is pounding. Sorry. All right, that'll work. Let's, uh, shouldn't be kill enemy. So I'll throw that in there, and that's that. 
compile and save. We'll do a quick test on that. We'll go back and I'm actually going to lock her in place until she finishes her remote and gets to now. Well, that was fun. Because it decides it wants to do that continuously. We only want to do once. So we'll do once. That was slightly annoying. So, okay, and yes, the enemy does not fight back. That's why they're target dummies. At one point, I had it um, over the top of their head saying, I'm a big dummy. So, okay, we have the effect set in to add some sounds. A little bit of an effect for when she hits with a sword. Um, before I close all, the ways, all those back down, if you guys got to um, tell me what these different spells do and stuff. So... We're going to NPC base up. We don't need that. We need our player base. All right, so with shouldn't be. Yep, that's a lot of crap right there. You got to you got to get out of there. There. Last room. Um We've got health regen. We've got uh, melee attack. We don't have any any magic attacks yet. We've got some random emotes. Thinking hit the E key for right now, maybe as a cast a spell of some sort. Um, I don't know what our spells are, so we'll take a look. She was gonna. Need the animation for our starting animation. Idle jump start, level start is five seconds in length. How about that? Um, so, on event begin play, do I'm sure I've got that. Yep, right there. We'll start off with a delay of five seconds and we have to disable and re-enable movement. Now we had to do that in the emotes because we needed her to stop moving so we had to deactivate character movement and then activate character movement. Pain in the ass, but oh well. Let's drag that off from there. And we want to deactivate character movement. Actually, you get your ass down there. We'll wait five seconds and then we will activate. Activate character movement. All right. That may or may not work correctly the, the first time. So I cannot move. And now I can. Okay. Hey, sometimes things happen the way they're supposed to when I first try. Sorry. <laughs> Better luck next time. Bye. All right. 
so that's all working any suggestions from the peanut gallery all right so shouldn't be as functional with at least a melee attack and some effects to go along with it but I don't know where her spells are I don't know how she cast anything I know that she has a dash ability and from what I've seen on the dash ability she lunges forward and hits anything that's in her path so to speak I, I don't know I don't know anything about it you guys got me over a barrel here I don't know her stuff all I'm knowing is from what I'm seeing inside of the animations and the actual files itself because I can see that um, she has uh, the attack wolves and honestly from what I've seen online of on YouTube videos of the wolf attack it's an AOE based attack but to me I see that more of a cast it and they go out and just do damage and that's it you know it's like a casting a fireball or something of that effect I see that wolf going out and just doing a, a buttload of damage and that's how I see it so if you look at the effects vector fields see uh, the wolves now the wolves effects here got wolf's body fire legs fire head and eyes glow it's nice that all these effects are broken up into multiple pieces so you can position them as needed and it's probably gonna want me to compile shaders on this no actually um, it's kind of a cool little particle effect there yeah that does look cool um, that's the body you got the legs the head just a smaller version of the same thing and the eyes okay um, I was expecting more than that oh well Now there shouldn't be kiss emote. Um, level start heart. That's what I needed. And that's it. Oh, it makes a heart shape. Okay. Um, let's look at this and on player start. Got a five second delay on our character movement. What if we split that up and put another delay in? We'll make this delay two seconds, this one three seconds. So it's still our five second delay. And then we want to spawn emitter at location. And like we did before, we need to get the location. But what we're going to do is grab our mesh. I'm going to get world location. We're going to do a vector plus vector because I'm sure we're gonna have to resize the location for it we can make rotation changes here but let's go ahead and leave that where it is let's see where it actually goes to uh, we actually need to put that in there So if we're going to do it about, where the hell did it go? Oh, okay, yep, yeah, it, it's at our feet. So let's go ahead and, and raise it up by 200. And 
two seconds was a pretty good clip uh, pretty good um, approximation so let's do 180 and we're going to change this to 2.5 and this to 2.5 so again we still have our five second delay but we should be able to All right, so we need to get the rotation. Get world rotation. Um, Let's hold off on that one just yet. Um, let's try adjusting the Y axis. No, we need the X axis. So that will be back to zero and we'll do that one to 50 and let's see what that does. Oh, that is so close. Try it at 55. I should put it right there in front of our hands. And we'll do by the Y 20. Yeah, welcome to Unreal Engine 4. Whenever you're doing little things like this, you're going to have to do a lot of trial by error and just trying to get it just right so we can actually lower the Z height to 170 and then we'll try putting this back at zero again so we can look at it again let's say that's pretty good and it's good enough for right now so performance <laughs> yeah those will have to be timed a little bit better hello um, so there's that and we didn't have the sound effect for starting just yet and look at sound cues yeah, there's a lot of timing stuff in here and just trying to get this one character refined is going to take all, quite a while um, and this is the good one this is the easy one to work on the rest of them don't even have an animation blueprint so I'm going to have to spend and um, it's going to take some time to, to reset and build an entire animation blueprint and blend space and everything else but you know it'll be worth it in the long run but like I said whenever you're you're first starting out with this stuff there's a lot of things you actually have to go through we just want to find her the startup sound <laughs> we did it when I have the power of the Asher I'll never have to live by anyone else's rules again. That's right. You'll never have to live by anyone else's rules. Um, revive, poke, profile dizzy. Uh, cut, cut. Uh, Romando, you're fired. <laughs> okay then. Um, lots of lore. Somebody's y'all gotta tell me what the hell this lore thing is. I have no idea what lore is in, in Shinbi, or with Paragon in general. Kwong. Let's hear you sing, Kwong. And what is a Kwong? 
I don't. All you guys that are um, Paragon fans, like, what the hell is his problem? He doesn't know what this is. He doesn't know what that is. Uh, no, I don't. I didn't play the game. I love getting stronger. Me too. I love getting stronger. There we go. Should be intro. It's great to meet you. So, grab this intro, and at the same time we spawn our emitter, let's go ahead and, well, place down at location, just so we can do it all at one time. So, place down at location, we'll grab that location link from our world location, and we'll use that sound and compile and save. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> All right, that was inappropriate. Ah! <laughs> Better luck next time. Ooh, not your best performance. Too bad. All right, so that's all working. What about a spell? We still need a spell. We just made pretty stuff and sound effects and stuff. Um, abilities, attack wolves, circling wolves, dash. We will get dash working. Don't worry. We'll get there. Um, ultimate. Let's see here. What does this final explosion look like? Interesting. Um, so to test these these emitters out and these uh, special effects, there's a couple ways we can do it, and the easiest way to do it is something similar to either our jump pad or our pain pad, and that I'll just go ahead and create one. So we have our assets and our triggers. I'll go ahead and create a. Let's actually go ahead and take the launch pad and duplicate that, and we'll just do a FX test. Come in, and instead of launch character, get rid of that. We can go ahead and get a reference to our cube and. get our world location so we know where we are and then with our world rotation we will um, we don't really need the player but it just is like the player is what triggers this so um, we'll spawn emitter at location drag our location in here and then now we can use this to test those um, different special effects. Close our player character for right now and let's actually go through and start looking at our effects and the one we were just looking at was our primary no, our ultimate final explosion. I want to look at that one and some of these other ones that are in here because I see one that says portal and I know somebody that might like that. I won't mention any names. Fix test and I'll throw that in there. Compile, save, and then actually we need to come back over here go to our triggers and I want to put it somewhere where we can see it so I'm going to put it right over here and then we'll hit play <laughs> hi there that's pretty cool yes that is a nice view stop being a pervert get your mind out of the gutter talking about the special effects there. So that one actually might be cool if you actually put it on the uh, the launch pad. So, okay, yeah. So this gives you a good platform for checking out different special effects. And I like the, the ultimate one. Let's grab ultimate heart. And all I gotta do is just click that arrow, compile, save and go back in and play it again. It's and if you really wanted to, um, you could go in and just
trigger them and set them off with delays. All right, so that just spawns a um, little heart right there. That's pretty cool. I don't really have a use for it, but yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Click one, go here, click there, compile, save, and play. So just that quickly, you can go between Aww, uh, so different sweet. effects. I know I'm sweet. Thank you. Interesting. So, yeah, you got Ultimate Marker, Ultimate Marker. Let's see what that one looks like. Looks like some cross swords or something. Yeah, this thing's being weird. Is everything is starting to get um, choppy? So it's not going to be long before it's time to uh, restart Unreal Engine Four. Hi there. Um, can't see that one so good because it's in the ground, but kind of get the idea of what it is. And let's take a look at the portal. Oh, got to compile shaders on that one, huh? All right, so let's get those shaders compiled, and we'll take a look at it. Uh, sorry, I'm drinking coffee. It's great, great to meet you. you. Well, thank you. It's great to meet you, too. Oh, okay. That's, that's pretty slick. All right. You are great. I know I'm great. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm, not really. All right. So, any other suggestions? Any other comments? Any more whatever? I'm just waiting on you guys. Primary sword glow? Is your sword supposed to glow? Well, there's 238 shaders to compile. Any day now. <sighs> okay. I don't see anything. So, moving right along. The dash. I did look at the dash special effects. Um, dash base, um, trails, and dash looks pretty cool. Um, circling wolves, that looks pretty cool as well. So let's actually take a look at. Um, oh, I just gotta look at that one. So we get a look at them just by double clicking on them. It's actually kind of cool too. Um, just another explosion effect. Nice one, but I believe this is the one that I looked at. Yeah, this is just like a blue aura, and it's supposed to be part of that that spell casting. What does that spell actually do, by the way? <laughs> Hi there. All right, so let's go ahead and that's kind of cool. Yeah, I see that more of a or you have attack thing. You throw something out in it and it creates that effect. Is it ever going to stop though? I ask you a question. Is it ever going to stop? Boom. Okay. 
Hello. That's what they all say. Bye. So yeah, I don't think that effect's ever gonna stop there. Um Attack wolves. Trails, wolves, fire. I got some shaders on that one, like you couldn't tell. Oh, that looks pretty cool. So if you're going to have a spell, you want to cast a spell, I think that one actually would look pretty good. Um, I think for right now, I'm going to throw this on there, and since we just came up with one that's a decent looking spell, we'll go ahead and go up to our assets and let's go ahead and create one folder called spells what do I name this? Um, projectile this is what we're going to create um, we're going to call it projectile base for right now um, and Let's go ahead and get you up there where you're supposed to be, you jackass. And then come back down and find that effect again. I believe it was that one. Yes, it looks pretty sick. So we want to add a component, particle system, attack walls. And then we can add a component projectile movement well I've been waiting for people to give me some input on what I, I should be doing so I have just been cleaning up some of the stuff for Shinbi some of our attacks um, adding some sounds in uh, things of that nature um, quick run through since you just showed up there we got to where oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> she plays a sound does her emote you get the special effect and then we were experimenting with um, an emitter point for spawning check uh, special effects. Plus, whenever we hit, we have an effect and we have a sound. Ooh, not your best performance. And plays little sound whenever she does that. <laughs> Better luck next time. That's too bad. So yeah, that's what we've got so far. Um, of course, Jim, we still got the uh, health regen, and this is just to cause her undue pain and stress. And that way, we can we can utilize our our healing or health kits. Um, eventually, gonna bring in a lot more animations for spell casting and. I don't know a whole lot about about any of this. Um, the wolf summons, it's a multi-part thing. It is going to be it's like the attack wolves. You've got to let's see, where is the actual you got the Shinbi you've got the Shinbi wolf and the mesh for the wolf which looks pretty cool it's more than just casting a spell um, because it's creating another entity because once I, I, I create this entity and I can place this wolf into the map but at that point then I got to add the other effects to it as well um, what I was doing here just then was creating a new projectile for her taking and casting that you won't see the white ball that's just uh, uh, a thing Yeah, but it's more than just a particle effect when you're talking about there's a skeletal mesh involved. Because whenever it happens, you have to spawn that, and then you have to then give it a circle. You have to create a spline for it to actually travel around that circle. And then to do uh, the other particle effects have to be attached to that skeletal mesh while it's doing that, so it creates those trails and so forth. So... 
at the end of the spell, whenever they would be desummoned or they would, or the spell would finish, the effect would finish. Yeah, um, they then have to be despawned. It has to destroy the actor. It has to kill the wolves, and then wait for all the the stuff to go away. So there's a lot involved. It's like right now, just making this projectile. So if we want her to cast a spell, she we want her to send out this projectile. So we have to first create the projectile, which is that, and then we have to create the projectile movement. And I'm going to start the movement off really kind of slow. And let's let it bounce, whatever, you know, just something different. It's not a homing projectile, there's no velocity change. Um, that's all fine and dandy. We're going to compile and save. It's just going to fly. So I can actually come back into where I was creating my projectile in the spells folder. And I can put that into the map and hit play and it's gonna fire and actually what I need to do is tell it that I don't want it to have um, any gravitational effects so we need to set the gravity to zero so it'll just go in a straight line that's a pretty it respectable speed so now whenever we want to hit a key and Ooh, um, yeah. This example right here, just to um, see what's going on, um, I will look at the file size just to see what it looks like before zipping or compressing or anything else. But um, each character that you add is around two gigabytes of space. And I've got two characters in here right now. If I add on the map assets for creating a map or two maps or whatever, similar to the ones that were used in, in the game, that's 17 gigabytes. So with my crap internet, that's an all day upload. So, yeah, it's going to be tough to try to do that. Um, being that it's not hosted on somewhere like Steam where I can just do an update every 15 minutes and it, you know, constantly be updating. Um, projects, the Paragon Project, properties, currently right now it's at 3 gigabytes and the only thing that I've really added in there is Shinbi and Decker. That's it. Oh yeah, the, whenever you you do a build. Now, the build on the game that, w that I was doing earlier in the uh, live stream earlier, that's 140 megabytes for a full multiplayer playable game. Because the assets are really low resolution, but they're not, like, simple. Um, well, I mean, I've, I've got the assets. I just, I haven't added them in here yet, because I want to add one, try to get the um, stuff working correctly, to the to at least to a certain standard that I like, and then like I brought in Decker and I started working on some of her animations and try to get her moving, and I've got to redo the entire animation blueprint system for Decker. There's still a lot of animations and stuff for Shinbi that haven't been completed yet. One man band here. I got nobody else working on this project with me. So. You know, I'm doing what I can to try to get things done. Plus, this isn't my primary game. So, you know, I work on this separate from working on my primary game. So, I'm going to go back into my player. And let's try to get it set up to where she can actually cast spells of some sort. So, I'm actually going to go to the viewport. Now, another thing that I can do is she came with two other skins. And we'll look at those skins here in just a second. If, uh, I'm doing this all on, on my own. 
there is no guide on how to do this and I had never played Paragon so I'm making things up as I go along as well too so you know you guys gotta kind of help me out with some of the of the abilities and the the nitty gritty on it like okay whenever she does this this happens so we can get a lot of that well this is kind of a step by step I mean if you follow along and these videos are actually being recorded and automatically uploaded so whenever I'm done broadcasting they're they're there for anybody to go back and watch you can do the same things that I'm doing you can just follow along I'm not doing anything with this project off camera everything that goes on in this project is being done on a live stream I want to add a component to my mesh that is a scene component and cast orb we're just gonna call it a cast orb a scene component is it is but it isn't a thing it's not really there so what we want to do is we want to attach this to I'm guessing let's add attach it to her head so which way she's looking is which way the spell is going to cast and it'll be similar as if she's you know you're looking at the camera and we're just gonna have it shoot straight actually let's um no let's actually attach that to the follow camera if we attach it to the follow camera then we set the um the coordinates to zero it out and then we can bring it forward to like right here it'll be in line with the way that the camera is facing so that should be good now the reason why we have this this cast orb is when cast any kind of spell the spell is going to come from that location hey it's magic it can come from where, wherever we want it to come from right so, got all that off the uh, begin play. Yikes! We'll come back and clean that up later. Um, Cause like this right here, this, this looks so clean and neat, right? That's what's in there. <laughs> so yeah, it's nice to be able to compact it back down into little small things, like our health regen and all that stuff. So we want to cast we want her to cast a spell so we need a key binding I'm gonna say hit the E key for right now because it's close by and we can just tap it pretty quickly so we want to create a new one we already have F set up to do something so let's set up E Actually, I'm going to rename that um, emote because I want this to now become quick cast and we want the binding to be E. Alright, so now input action fast cast um, yeah that changed the name changed um, emote that's what we needed it should have automatically changed the name but it did not so okay um, we're gonna come over here and say quick cast so we hit our E key we want to start off with spawn actor from class and we want to get um, a reference to our cast orb and actually can't go directly into that so we can always do a make transform 
It was just a gutless, simple, eh, it works kind of thing. Um, and we're going to have to make some changes to that anyway. But for now, let's go ahead and just go ahead to attach to component. The component we want to attach it to is, well, the parent is going to be the casting orb. We want to keep everything relative. We're not using a socket, so yeah. Why is there an error there? Spawn actor must have a class. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. I forgot to put the spell in. Projectile base. Thank you. I'm so sorry. So finicky. Hi there. Hello there. All right, so it's spawning, it's working, it's not spawning in the direction I want it to go. So, but yeah, that, that's alrighty. Being that I have it bound to the camera, you turn the mouse and it's moving also. Okay, yeah, we'll worry about that later. Um. One catastrophe at a time. <laughs> Never really mentioned it much, but in the temporary version of the, the Poly Pirates game, it, when you shoot the musket, it'll do the same thing. Your projectile, you see it go down the uh, down through the air, and as soon as you turn, it'll hook, but then all of a sudden it'll just go crazy and just friggin' hook back. So, yeah. I could dial back the time to live and increase the velocity and that'll take care of a little bit of that but for now to get our rotation we need to go ahead and get we can go back with the cast orb and get the relative rotation um, Let's try getting... No, we can't use that. You go away, you jerk. You knew that wasn't going to work. we get the world locate, rotation. And then we can link that to there. And that should fix the direction of which we're casting. Oh, you're so sweet. I know I'm so sweet. Now shut up. I see, I'm trying to... Well, I'm trying to not do that, okay? 